This is the least realistic that Minecraft can be, and every single time that I die, Minecraft is going to get more and more realistic until either my PC explodes or we beat the realistic ender dragon. This is level 1 and everything is literally just one color. My crosshair is also just a big square, so that's pretty interesting. The water also looks really awful, you can't even see through it and there's these weird green things coming out of it. I'm not really sure if it's even supposed to be like that. But yeah, this texture pack just looks really bad, I hope there is nobody that actually plays Minecraft like this. Like, look at this lava. I honestly kind of want to jump into it just to get to the next level of realism because this looks too bad. Okay, I got some food, I think. It doesn't really look appetizing, though. It's kind of just a square. Okay, and this chicken is definitely the worst thing I've seen so far. What is this? All right, let's just get some stone tools because we still have to beat the game. And this crafting looks so bad. You can't even see where to put the items. Now let's mine some stone. Oh, wait, this is coal. I literally can't even tell the difference. That's so funny. Okay, now we have our stone tools and I think it's time to upgrade to level two. I I've had enough of this. So let's just make a bed and we'll set our spawn and let's just put all our stuff in a chest. All right, now it's time to jump in this pure orange liquid. And now we are on realism level two and this looks a lot better than it did before. We have some shaders and a little bit better of a texture pack. Although this still isn't a very realistic texture pack. I mean, what is this block even supposed to be? I have no idea. The good thing is now we're actually able to tell which tool is which instead of them just being a bunch of big squares. And wait, there's also new sounds when you switch between tools. I'm 99% sure it wasn't like that before. Okay, now that we have this texture pack, I want to try to get a full set of iron armor to see what it looks like. So in order to do that, we're first going to have to find a cave. Oh wait, I thought this block was coal, but it's actually andesite. And wait, is this iron in the corner here? Nope, that's granite. Okay, that's one bad thing about this texture pack. You can't tell what the ores look like. Wait, look at this wolf. This guy is looking super realistic. I wish I had a bone to tame the realistic wolf, but unfortunately I don't. And wait, are these dolphins? They look so cool. Look at their tails move. Okay, the water looks really bad though, so I'm just gonna have to move on. Okay, we finally found some coal, and it actually looks a lot different than andesite. And with these realistic sounds, this cave is actually kind of scary, but the good thing is we did find some iron. But yeah, these sounds definitely make caving kind of scary, even though it's mainly just water that I'm hearing. Alright, now we have all our iron, so we just need to smelt it, and let's craft our full iron armor. Okay, and it's just literally regular armor. I wasted all that time getting it, thinking it would look cool, just like the actual items do. So after that disappointment, I think it's time to upgrade our real again. So let's just put all our stuff away in this chest, and I'm just gonna jump in this lava to upgrade to level 3. Okay, this is level 3, and now things are starting to actually look pretty realistic. You can tell because I'm getting a lot lower FPS than I was before. And yeah, these items actually look a lot more realistic now. I mean, look at this sword. This is crazy. And I'm also walking kind of realistic now. My limbs are actually bending when I walk. This looks so weird. Wait, is this supposed to be iron ore? Why is it glowing? And wait, physics are on in this level 2? This is so cool. The coal ore is just being broken into a bunch of pieces. I can also hold my torches out now for light. I don't need to place them. Okay, it's nighttime right now, so I want to sleep to see how realistic it looks in the day. And wait, there's monsters nearby. That's not cool. Look at the zombie. Why is he walking like this? Okay, and he literally got chopped into a bunch of pieces. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, now we can go to sleep, and let's just go up to the surface to see what it looks like in the daytime. Why is the spider jumping like that? Is this how spiders fight in real life? I don't think spiders fight at all, actually. But yeah, this level of realism actually looks insane during the daytime. I wonder how it can even get more realistic than this. Okay, we still have to beat the game, so my next goal is to make it to the nether, which means we need to find some lava. And the realistic lava is probably going to look so cool, judging by how everything else looks. Okay, and we found a ruined portal. This will probably be good enough to go to the nether. Alright, what's in the chest? Okay, we got four obsidian. That's actually going to be really good to go to the nether. So let's just place two of these here, and we'll put the other ones here. And now let's just water this lava to complete the portal. And we actually still need a flint and steel. I don't know how I forgot that. Wait, is that gravel? I can't even tell. How is it blending into the sand like that? That's pretty cool. Okay, now let's just light the portal, and I was honestly expecting it to look a lot cooler. I'm not gonna lie. And this is the realistic nether. It's definitely not as cool as the realistic overworld. And now that we've made it to the nether, we need to find a nether fortress so we can get some blaze rods to beat the game. Okay, this guy needs to stop chasing me. He's not even realistic. Why is he here? Digging in the wall is just not really possible. I literally can't see anything. Okay, we finally found the fortress. Now now we just have to kill some blazes. Okay, let's just kill all these blazes. And I think that's definitely enough blaze rods, so now it's time to get some ender pearls. But first, I kind of want to see what level 4 looks like, so I'm just going to jump in here. And this is what level 4 looks like. It's honestly not that much different. It probably wasn't the best idea to die in the nether either, because now I have to go back and find all my stuff. But at least the game is looking a bit more realistic now. Also, look at this crafting table. It's super realistic. Okay, we're back in the nether, and honestly, nothing has really changed here either. It also 
seems like some of the blocks are just not realistic anymore. I'm not sure how that happened. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm going in the right direction. Hopefully I am or my stuff is going to despawn. And this spot looks good because there is a ton of blocks here. And yeah, my stuff is down there. Good. I was beginning to think I lost it. The next thing we need to do to beat the game is get some ender pearls. So I'm going to try to find the biome that has endermen. And I'm pretty sure this is the biome where endermen spawn. So now we just need to find some. All right, let's just put this guy in a boat. Wait, what is going on when I hit him? That is so weird. Wait, the endermen have like special fighting techniques. This is actually really cool. Look at him. He's trying to kick me. I didn't know that enderman knew how to fight like this. All right, I think we have enough pearls. So now it's time to go back to the overworld and find the stronghold so we can get to the realistic ender dragon. Okay, the eye of ender says it's this way. So let's start heading to the stronghold. This water also looks pretty realistic. If it wasn't for the render distance, this would look so cool. Okay, we found some land and I think we should be getting pretty close to the stronghold. Wait, are these supposed to be pigs? I didn't know there were super realistic pigs in the game. And also these turtles look kind of realistic and also kind of not. It's a mix of both. We might as well get some beds from this village because we're going to need these to kill the dragon. And wait, look at these villagers. I had no idea they looked like this. I'm also pretty sure the villager just blinked, which is really weird. I don't really like that actually. Okay, it's looking like the stronghold is right here. So let's just dig down. I literally can't see anything because of the physics. What is this? And we made it to the realistic stronghold and I'm instantly being attacked by every mob. All right, I'm pretty sure this is the only only place that the portal room can be, but there's just so many mobs. I don't know how to get there. Okay, I think that's all of them. Wait, the silverfish is actually gonna kill me. Okay, that was almost really bad. So, as you can see, I only have two hearts left, so I'm going to have to die one more time before we fight the dragon. But the problem is, this next level might just break my PC, so hopefully it doesn't. Okay, this is level five, and now things are looking insane. I don't even know where my stuff went. I'm pretty sure this level just broke it. I also don't know what this black thing is in the way here. This is so weird. Okay, I got my stuff back, but don't ask how, I definitely got it very legit. And now, as you can see, things are looking too realistic. I'm not even placing blocks anymore, it's just a bridge. Okay, I'm pretty sure the portal room is in this direction. And yeah, we've made it to the realistic portal room. Okay, let's just fill this thing in with eyes of ender. And I guess we're just gonna jump right in. Whoa, why is all the endstone purple? Oh yeah, I forgot the whole thing was just gonna collapse like that. Okay, so it looks like there are no longer any blocks in the end. The island is actually realistic. But the ender dragon is just default. That's actually kind of disappointing. At least the end looks super cool though. I mean, look at that sky. Okay, so we need to place some obsidian here and let's just get our beds ready to kill the ender dragon. Okay, I don't really think this is working. It's impossible for me to see the dragon's hitbox. I guess we just have to use our sword. Okay, this isn't gonna work either. The dragon just keeps disappearing. I'm not really sure what to do here anymore, so I guess let's just break all these crystals. Okay, I kind of forgot that was gonna happen. I'm not gonna lie. At least we get to see the final level in the overworld though. Oh my god, this is a completely different game from when we were in the overworld last. Look at this tree. It's basically a real tree. In the sun is just a big blob. There's literally just no blocks as well, so everything just looks completely different. Okay, even though we died, it was definitely worth it, because level 6 is insane. Look at these caves, they're just circles. In the side of this mountain, it's like actually difficult to climb up now. The first room was savannah themed. I was able to find these buttons, so I pressed all of them, and one of them made a ding noise and dropped down water on the outside. So I went up the water and found a very detailed chest with a square inside of it. The square was actually a netherite hoe, so I used it to start hoeing the edge blocks to hopefully reveal something behind them. I eventually found out one of the blocks was connected to some redstone and it put a block of sand inside of my inventory. The sand could only be placed on sandstone though, which was kind of a problem. After a couple minutes, I ended up finding the sandstone hidden under the opaque water pool and that unlocked the entrance to the next room. Now the graphics were looking a little better. I was in the nether and I could see the exit on an island across the lava. So I parkoured up the trees and searched the top of them but found nothing. I noticed I could cross these vines to the glowstone though and now I was able to reach an island. The island had a barrel with a saddle in it so I took that and went back down. I then parkoured again and I checked the other glowstone but all I found was a button that did nothing. I spent the next 5 minutes searching for anything else in the room and I found nothing. So I just kept trying to jump across the lava without dying and eventually it worked. In room 3, I was now able to see myself when I looked down. It was a snow biome with a cabin and I instantly noticed some barrels. So I searched them and found a raw pork chop and a piece of charcoal. I found another pork chop in a hidden barrel and then I entered the house. In the house there was even more empty barrels and there was also a smoker so I decided to cook the pork. Cooking the pork gave me a stone shovel and I climbed onto the roof of the house only to find another piece of charcoal. From the top of the house, I was able to see another chest though, so I parkoured over to the chest and found a lever inside of it. Now that I had checked everything, I started digging the snow with the shovel because that seemed logical. In one corner I found a hidden room that had another lever inside of it, and in another corner I found another hidden room that required me to use the lever to enter it. 
When I entered the room, there was another door, and I was able to use my other lever to go to the next room. In room 4, the shaders had gotten better, but this was still nothing compared to what was to come. I also forgot to enable the texture pack, so pretend it's like this. I was in a jungle with a huge temple in the middle, and I needed to make a sacrifice. I found these blocks which were making weird sounds when I stood on them, and I climbed up the temple in the middle only to find a chest that was empty. I climbed on top of the trees, and I found a sunflower in the leaves, but I was unable to break it. I went up higher, and I found a chest with one gold ingot in it, and that was it. Next, I climbed up this hill, and I found a hidden chest in the corner with a lead inside of it. So I put the lead on this cow, and nothing happened. But then I took the cow over to the blocks that were making sounds, and I stood on the other one, and it made a noise. I went towards where I heard the noise, and I found a chest with another gold ingot in it. I decided to check out what this villager was trading next, and I found a trade for a stone hoe that required a lead. So I traded for the stone hoe, and saw that it could be used to break a sunflower, which I needed for the other trade option. So I went back to the top of the tree, and broke the sunflower. I brought the sunflower back, and now I had a melon which could be placed on top of the coarse dirt. I found coarse dirt beside another melon, so I placed the melon down and heard another noise. I went towards the noise, and a chest had appeared in this cave, which had another gold ingot. At this point there was nothing left to do, so I put my gold in the chest at the top, assuming it was where I should put my sacrifice. When I put my gold in the chest, things started happening, and I made it to the next room. In room 5, things were starting to get realistic. My FPS was dropping rapidly, and I still had more rooms to complete, so I needed to hurry up because my PC was getting ready for takeoff. I was in a mine, and I don't know why, but I took this person's head. I also found an iron pickaxe which could only break iron ore, so I started mining. I found a room beyond the iron with a person named Flumu or something, I don't know, so I took their head too. I kept mining iron, and I found Flimus, and there was a lever hidden in the lava behind Flimus which could only be placed on mossy stone bricks. So I looked around for mossy stone bricks, and I found an iron door which I was able to open. I found Paul, and Paul was trading 3 iron for a stone button. The problem was I had raw iron because I played the map on the wrong version. So don't tell anyone what happened, but now I have a button. There was also a book on a lectern, and it had a bunch of words in it. I could only place the button on chiseled stone bricks, which were right in front of me, but I didn't realize it. So I looked around for almost 5 minutes while my IQ was draining, and there was clearly a reason for that. Eventually I went back to the room and found out these were chiseled stone bricks. So I magically got more buttons, and each time I pressed a button, the color of the block changed in front of it. When you actually read the book, it tells you that you need to enter a color combination. The only place I had seen colors was the armor of the people around the mine, so I tried putting their colors in alphabetical order, but it didn't work. I actually just had them in the wrong order though, so I tried again and it opened the entrance to room 6. Room 6 had a lot nicer shaders, but my FPS was dropping even faster. I was in a room from one of those rich mansions that are always haunted. I found a flower, then I found a secret room behind a trapdoor, and in the room there was an emerald on the table and nothing else I could take. I also stole the armor off of these armor stands and checked every barrel and trapdoor until I found a diamond. It was looking like my new goal was to rob this mansion rather than escape it, but then I realized someone was home, and they looked very scary. It turns out they wanted to trade these items for the exact set of armor that I had, but I was still missing two of the items though, so I only did the first two trades. There was a book telling me Larry gave the key to Barry, and this was Barry, so now I knew I didn't get scammed. I went back out to the main room and found the sunflower right where I started, and now I only needed an iron nugget. I ended up finding a room behind this large wall of paintings, and inside of it was the nugget. So I took the nugget back to Barry and got the last piece of armor. I tried putting on the armor, but it did nothing, but then I remembered where I got it from and it made sense. So I placed the armor on the armor stands and I heard a noise, but the door was still closed. I ran around for anything else and I found a secret room behind the paintings, but it was useless. So I ran around some more and I found a hidden room in the most obvious place it could have been. In this room there were four swords on the wall and I instantly knew I had to rotate them in a certain way to open the door. I remembered seeing a sword like this in the first hidden room, so I left the room and I ended up finding the diamond sword instead, which was pointing at the top left. So I rotated the diamond sword and I ran back to the trapdoor hidden room and found the gold sword pointing at the bottom left. Now I just needed to find one more sword because I could just guess the last one. So I went back to the useless room beyond the painting and it was still useless. I ended up finding the last sword in the first open room and it was pointing towards the middle right. So I guessed the last sword and I heard a noise telling me the door was open. So I went through the door, and the gold block was here to teleport me to the next room. Room 7 had new shaders, and they came with really annoying motion blur. I also had a very realistic shadow. I found a chest with a wooden shovel that could break red sand, so I started digging. After breaking almost every block of red sand, I found a chest containing a cactus. The cactus could only be placed on top of a cactus, so I found a cactus I could place it on, and it created a staircase. When I got to the top of the staircase, it let me jump to a tree, and the tree had a chest with cocoa beans in it that could only be placed on jungle logs. So I found the one spot on this tree it would let me place them, and a ding went off and I was given a turtle egg. 
I didn't notice I was given a turtle egg though, so I spent 5 minutes being stupid before I noticed the egg and saw I could only place it on sandstone. So I spent 5 more minutes searching every sand block because of the realistic textures, but then I found out it was the block that already had the turtle eggs on it. Placing the turtle egg gave me sugarcane, which I placed on the only sugarcane without string on top of it to open the entrance to the final room. Room 8 looked like some sort of backrooms maze, so I put on the final level of realism but unfortunate things happened. I wasn't giving up though, so I started my game up with more memory allocated, and after another crash, I got it to work, but I wasn't able to last more than 30 seconds without crashing, so enjoy this accurate representation of the last level. The level 1 graphics were insanely realistic, especially this dirt. There was a house in front of me, and inside of it I found a chest that gave me a wet sponge every time I opened it, and a few furnaces beside it. There was a cauldron and a brewing stand filled with empty bottles outside, and I found a ladder leading up to the roof. On the roof there was a chest with 5 blaze rods and 3 nether wart inside of it, and I could see an entrance to another room which I couldn't make it to. I found a button on the ground but it did nothing and I found a staircase leading underground beside the house. Underground I found a chest that kept filling with iron ingots and I found a button to spawn a phantom. After killing the phantom I had the resources to make a slow falling potion so I headed back up. I crafted buckets and used the wet sponges to fill the buckets with water. After that was done I filled the cauldron outside with water and I used it to fill the empty bottles. Now all I had to do was wait for the slow falling potion to finish, and once I was done that, I drank the potion and glided to the next room. In this room I was getting much better FPS, but everything was still very realistic. I was on a farm with a windmill at the back of the room, so I entered the windmill. In the windmill, I found a very sharp broom which could be used to break cobwebs, and I also found a scythe to break crops, and an axe to break logs. I explored the top floor of the windmill, and I found another chest with enchantment bottles and three rabbit spawn eggs. I checked the basement and I found a shopping list which told me I needed to get rabbit stew, a loaf of bread, and cooked cod. I walked further down the basement and broke the cobwebs with my broom and found a lure 3 book. Next I spawned the rabbits and only killed one of them because I already got what I needed so why would I kill more of them? I decided to get the easiest item first which was the bread. All I had to do was break the wheat crops with the scythe and then I could craft the bread. I also found some wood I was able to break with the axe and then I went back to the windmill to craft my bread. It took me forever to find the crafting table, but I should have known this was a crafting table, look how obvious it is. Now I had a piece of bread, and I also crafted a fishing rod because I needed to get cooked cod next. I went back outside and used the water to fish, only to realize I forgot to add the lure 3 enchantment to become a professional fisherman. So I added lure 3, and I was able to catch a raw cod first try. I went back down to the basement, and I cooked the cod in one of the furnaces, and apparently that gave me nuggets. Now I only had one item left to craft, and that was rabbit stew. So the first thing I did was check Google, and Google told me that I need a carrot, a baked potato, cooked rabbit, a bowl, and a mushroom. I knew how to get four of these things, but I had no idea where to get a mushroom. Eventually after checking all of these trap doors outside, I was able to find one which had a hole underneath it. I swam down the hole, and I found a little cave where there was nine mushrooms. The problem was that I couldn't break them, but I fixed that pretty easily when I found this block of wood that I could break. Now I was able to craft the rabbit stew, and I used this button in the basement to teleport to the next level. In this level, the game was still realistic, but the shaders were noticeably worse. I was in the desert with a giant mine in the middle of the room. I went down to the bottom of the mine, and I found a lava pool that had a room behind it, but I couldn't swim through it or I would die. So I went further down the cave, and I found an elytra in a minecart chest, and 45 wood planks in a different minecart chest. I also found a cave that I had to crouch to get into, which had a chest with a bunch of totems in it. I grabbed all the totems and went back to the lava pool from earlier, which I was now able to swim across. On the other side there was a chest with a pickaxe which could break iron ore and coal ore. So I started mining every vein of iron and coal ore that I could find and I found nothing except this cave with a skeleton across from me. I could see a button on the floor but I was unable to reach it so I continued searching for something else. After finding nothing I gave up and pressed the hint button which told me shields can deflect arrows from skeletons. So I used my coal to smelt some iron and I crafted a shield. I went back to the cave with the skeleton and I blocked my shield. An arrow activated the button but nothing happened, I thought I was stuck but eventually I realized I had a compass in my inventory which was named X marks the spot. The compass could be used to break red wool so I found an X made of red wool and I pressed the button to go to the next level. Now the graphics were looking less realistic but still not bad. I was in a snow level with a cabin and two different snowmen. One of the snowmen was named Henry and Henry asked me to get him a golden carrot and some pumpkin pie so I started looking for that. I entered the cabin and found a chest with a shovel that could break red sand, a book, and 20 torches that I could place on sand. The book was called Snowman Quotes, and inside of it, it said sometimes instead of roasting other people, you should stop to roast yourself. I think they were referring to the fact that only 5% of you are subscribed to me. So I went outside and used the shovel to break a piece of red sand, and there was an area beside it with a small hole in the wall and that I could only crawl through. 
I climbed back up and I found out the torches could melt the ice, so I melted some of the ice and found more red sand in the water pool. Under the red sand there was a chest with 3 carrots and 7 gold nuggets which meant I only needed one more for the golden carrot. When I swam back up I saw a chest on a tree so I parkoured to it and there was 3 sugarcane and 10 eggs in it. Next I used the ice to swim into the hole from before and I found a sign with coordinates on it. When I made it to the coordinates I found a secret lever which put the message pumpkin broken in chat. I went back down the hole and I picked up the pumpkin. Now I was able to craft the pumpkin pie and I just needed one more nugget to make the golden carrot. I realized that I could just smelt my shovel and that would give me one more golden nugget. So I smelted the shovel and I crafted the golden carrot and then I delivered the two items to Henry and he gave me a flint and steel. At first I was confused but then I remembered what the book said from earlier so I jumped in the fire. I was teleported into the air and there was now a cave underneath me. There was a button in the cave and when I pressed it all it did was play water sounds. I'm not going to lie I cheated on this part but basically what you had to do was get the same amount of air bubbles as times the sound was played. The next level was just default Minecraft with slight shaders. I was in some sort of space base and there was one room on each side of me. I decided to check the room with the chest first and it had a chest with a book and a bunch of hunger potions. The book told me to drink the potions but when I did nothing seemed to happen. I climbed up a water pool in the middle and I found there was a second floor. I found a gold block with a pressure plate beside it which said helmet equipper but nothing happened when I stood on the pressure plate. I checked a few chests and I found a laser hoe and another book that said I needed to eat a baked potato for jump boost. So I went to the last accessible room and I collected a few potatoes. I also found a chest with biofuel in it so I was able to cook the potatoes. I ate the potato and I used it to jump up to a door which led to another room with a chest that contained a button. I placed the button on the gold block which said helmet equipper and I was given a glass block which I guess is a space helmet. I went back to the first floor and I was now able to enter the room that said do not leave without helmet. The room led me outside and I immediately found a chest with a music disc which was the key to something. I looked around a little bit and I found a place to put the key. When I used the key I was given a spaceship repair tool which let me break blocks of iron. So I started breaking the spaceship with the repair tool and I found a chest with a glass breaker that could break glass. So I went to the other side of the room and I found a place that I could break into which led me to the next level. Now the graphics were pretty bad and this somehow isn't even the last level. The first thing I found was a sound puzzle which I'm pretty sure has to do with these pressure plates but I just didn't listen to the sounds and died a few times before leaving it for later. I found a hole with a sign that said needs fire resistance, a massive unlit portal, and a nether fortress building. Inside the fortress I found a filled cauldron and an empty brewing stand. I also found this really useful diagram and something growing that was hopefully nether wart. I went up to the roof and found 3 shields and 3 red squares which were apparently sharp 5 gold swords. I searched the last corner of the room and I found parkour leading me to a blaze spawner. I absolutely destroyed the blazes and I got a few blaze rods and I realized there was nothing left for me to do except the pressure plate puzzle. So I spent 15 minutes guessing the puzzle instead of using the sounds because that was easier. After crossing the puzzle I got 2 flint and steels and now I was able to light the nether portal. When I got through the portal I realized I was now in the overworld but it was actually the nether and the level before was the overworld. There was a house and inside of it there was a chest with a shovel that could break sand and 4 fishing rods. I found a hole beside the house and it led to a cave with sand so I broke all the sand. There was an unfinished end portal in this cave and there was also a chest with 2 wart pickers. I couldn't find anything else so I went back to the overworld slash nether and I picked the wart. The next part was confusing because I had to use this really detailed diagram to solve it but eventually I figured it out. It told me the slime cave was opened and I found the slime cave with fire covering 90% of my screen. There was a button that spawned a baby slime so I did some killing and headed back to the nether slash overworld where I smelted some of my sand to make glass. Then I went back to the overworld slash nether only to realize I had to go back through the portal again to craft the bottles. Now I was finally able to make a fire resistance potion and I swam through the hole to the next room. The next room's graphics were absolutely terrible, the colors looked like I was playing the first Mario game ever created. This room had no puzzles and it was just a bunch of trivia which I definitely completed first try because I'm a genius. After getting all the questions correct I was finished the puzzle and I was able to see what this texture pack actually looked like. Honestly it's probably better the puzzle ended here because I don't think my eyes could have handled this. And it was even worse on the title screen. Okay, we are not going anywhere near that. A couple months ago, I made a video on the scariest mod in Minecraft, and since then, a completely new Cave Dweller mod has been released that is supposedly 10 times as scary. So, just like last time, I decided to be the judge of that. Here we are in a brand new world, and apparently this mod is way scarier than the last one. So, in order to make it worse, I am using shaders so that my caves will be very dark, which is definitely going to end up being a problem later in the video. So, let's collect some wood and some stone, make all my stone tools, 
levels, the usual Minecraft stuff, and our goal in this video is to make full diamond armor. I am not allowed to leave the cave until I'm either wearing full diamond or I'm dead. I'm really hoping it won't be the second one, but with what happened last time, I'm not very confident. But confidence shouldn't matter, as long as I have enough gear to survive the cave dweller. So I went on a mission to get some food, and what better place to get food than a village? First things first, we gotta get rid of this guy, I could really use his iron. And now we need some hay bales. Looks like I found the only village that comes with no hay bales. But it doesn't really matter though, because there is some conveniently placed food right here. And now I'm just gonna smelt some of this iron we got, and we'll make a shield and a pickaxe. Now let's smelt the rest of this food, and we'll get a bucket of water, because I do a lot of jumping. Alright, now we're pretty much set up to go into a cave, and once I go into this cave, I am not allowed to come back up until I'm full diamond armor. Or of course, the second option, which I don't want to talk about. The first thing I'm gonna do in here is get some coal, because it's gonna be super dark with these shaders. And yeah, I guess we're just going into this cave. Okay, creepers already? You guys aren't the monster that I'm supposed to be worried about. Like, actually, please go away. We might as well get all the iron that we find down here, as having some armor would be pretty useful. And it seems this cave has come to an end, so I have to dig down. Okay, that is not really what I wanted. Okay, I just got jump scared by a zombie. To be fair, he fell on top of me. How was I supposed to expect that? Still no sign of the actual cave monster, though. I remember the old one making a lot more noise. As long as he gives me time to get full iron, I guess. I don't know why I'm mining gold. We don't need gold. But we do have enough iron now, so let's just put some iron into these furnaces. And now I'm feeling a lot safer, so let's go find some diamonds. I'm not gonna lie, the scariest part about this mod right now is the fact that I haven't heard the cave monster yet. Like, did I forget to install the mod again? Okay, this is a giant cave, which is honestly more scary than a small one. And that is exactly why it's more scary than a small cave. That is definitely not a normal noise. Okay, zombie, now is not the time. I have a cave monster stalking me. Only thing we can really do is keep exploring the cave, I guess. Well, we could just stand still and do nothing, but that won't help us find diamonds. I'm also not sure how we're gonna find any diamonds, considering how dark it is in this cave. I've probably ran past so many already. Okay, it's been a while since we heard that noise. Maybe I actually got away from him. And I was just talking about how I thought he was gone, and now he's back. But at least we found our first vein of diamonds, and it's just a one vein, meaning we still need 23 more. Okay, we are not going anywhere near that. I don't know if you can even see that on the video, but he was literally right there. What am I even supposed to do? Can I just wait him out by sitting here? Okay, nah, I'm not going back out there. I'm just gonna strip mine to another cave. There's no way I'm dealing with that. Alright, I've been strip mining long enough that I'm ready to go back. If he's there, I don't even care anymore. I'm not scared of this guy. Okay, he's not back here anymore. Wait, what was that? That is definitely not a normal noise. Yep, that's definitely him. Okay, he's literally right there. I know I shouldn't go back, but I gotta see this again. And he's just gone, that is so weird. Well, at least we didn't die. Oh, and we also found more diamonds. And we found even more, bringing our total up to three. Yeah, I'm not sure if this full diamond thing is happening. But as long as we just have peaceful interactions with him, just like the last one, we should be fine. That doesn't stop the fact that I'm still terrified though, but that's all good. Okay, of course he's in the only part of the cave that I haven't been to yet. I guess I'm just gonna slowly dig down to make sure he isn't down here. Okay, my pickaxe is about to break, so I'm making a terrible investment. We are now back down to zero diamonds. Alright, we just gotta leave this bunker. There is no way that I'm getting any diamonds from here. Yeah, he's not even here. It's just a skeleton. I wonder if this is what exploring an actual cave feels like. Okay, this is crazy. How are we gonna find the deep dark when we are also being followed by the cave dweller? We're about to have the cave dweller and the warden in here. Okay, the jump scared by random mobs total is up to two now. Honestly, less than I expected. Nah, we're getting out of here. I do not want to be a part of whatever that is. He can stay down there wherever he is, because we are not dealing with that right now. I really don't need you attacking me right now. This is a bad time. Okay, I've been around this whole cave like five times. I think we're safe up here. But he definitely spawned or something, because that was not the same noise from before. All we need is 24 diamonds, which is exactly where we started. And at this point, I'm pretty sure it isn't even a lack of diamonds. It's just a lack of eyesight because of these shaders. And I just got jump scared by a regular mob again. Come on, diamonds, stop being the rarest ore in the caves. We're also running dangerously low on food. I'm about to have to start eating rotten flesh. Okay, that is a terrifying noise. I'm blocking in for this one. I don't know what that is. Why is it so long? How is it still going? 
Yeah, we're just gonna sit here for a second. I am not ready to face that noise. Oh, at least we found some diamonds. It's always a one vein. I'm just being cursed by the cave dweller or something. After that last noise, I am not stopping for anything. We are just running at this point. Okay, and we found more diamonds. And instead of one, this time we got two. That's great. All right, it appears I'm out of food, so it's time to dig into our rotten flesh. More deep dark? We are not going this way. Okay, it looks like our only option is the deep dark, actually. Maybe the warden will help us fight the cave dweller, so it might actually be a good idea. I keep feeling like I'm hearing noise because everything is so silent. Ooh, there might be food in one of these chests. Nothing. And we actually got some food. Let's go. Okay, it appears he is not happy that we were able to eat. And he's literally just right there. Yeah, that's not terrifying at all. I hate the fact that he just stalks you and he doesn't actually attack. It kind of makes me want to chase him for some reason. But I'm going to use my brain and just avoid the area that we saw him in, which is probably the best idea. And it's just the only way we were able to go, so of course he would spawn there. Well, hopefully he's not still here. Okay, he did leave us some diamonds. And it's just a one vein again. At this point, we were just stuck down here. The only way out might just be to die to him. It's not looking good at this point. Another one vein. That is awesome. I also feel like I'm starting to backtrack in my cave, but I just don't have enough torches to be placing everywhere. Okay, this is a much larger cave. I'm pretty sure I haven't been here yet. There's gotta be diamonds in a cave this big. There's no way. I literally can't see anything at the bottom here, but I definitely just have to jump down. Oh, and we found more diamonds. Just another one vein, which brings our total up to six. Okay, it's that scary noise again. The one that lasts for way too long and makes you immediately box up. Since I'm able to make a piece of diamond armor, I might as well. Anything to help us fight against this guy. And I swear I can hear this guy breathing. Am I going insane? Okay, there's just way too many mobs out here. Why is there a giant water pool here that I can't see? These shaders are honestly half of the experience. I really can't see anything down here. Come on, there has to be diamonds. This cave is so big. We're almost out of rotten flesh. It looks like we need to farm a little more. And we're also almost out of torches. That will definitely be a problem if that happens. I've never been more scared while caving. This is actually insane. I just don't understand where the diamonds are. This is actually crazy. Okay, why is there just a zombie with a sword? If that thing hits me, it'll probably kill me. Please don't blow up the food. Okay, I'm kind of busy right now, so how about we just don't? Why is the zombie just waiting for me to leave? This is where I heard him, but it's really just the only way that I can go. This is just kind of looking like the end right here. We got no food and no torches. Oh my god. And we're just dead. I threw my pickaxe trying to press one. He just gets me at the perfect time when I'm not paying attention. That's actually crazy. I had no idea he would be there. I guess that proves it. This mod is definitely scarier than the first one. If you want to play this mod, I put a link to the mod creator's video in the description. But I don't know why you would want to play this. I'm going to be afraid of caving forever now.